record this meeting. Okay, we'll make it official and we'll expand the webcam. There we go. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, it is Wednesday, the 26th of April, 2017. I appreciate everyone joining us. Today's webinar uh, is going to be sales and marketing and uh, some of the stuff that I've learned in my 20 plus years and some of the stuff that I see that works. We have a lot of agents who do different things. Um, hold on a second real quickly. As you guys come in, I'm going to send you an unmute request. If, you, if we can unmute you, then you can share your thoughts as well. And... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Well, we got that, Kathy. Kurt, I think I sent you one. Maybe not. I'll try it again. Uh, Elda, Jeremy's web. Kevin, send on request. <coughs> Lynn, Linda. Okay. People can request to be muted um, as well. So when you come in, you know, if you're not hearing or if you your mute on, you can unmute it yourself. Yeah, I, th I think what Alex is trying to say is that if you want to share something, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and uh, let us know. We can do an unmute request and then you're unmuted and we can uh, listen to your stories, your anecdotes. This is interactive. I want to make sure that we all kind of share information. I mean, I can go on and on, uh, but that's not the most productive way to use our time. So I think um, sharing stories, what's worked, what's not worked. I'm going to give you my perspective. Uh, with 350 agents, I see a lot of stuff that works. I probably see more stuff that doesn't work. Um, you know, people kind of flailing about. They're paying for this. They're paying for that. They're always trying to do something um, a little bit different to give them an edge, which I don't blame them. I would do the same thing, and I have done the same thing. Um, but so, yeah, let's just uh, let's share those stories and share that information with each other. And let's see if we can't um, yeah, make this a good training. Okay, so this is our second week of training through our Fuse training. Um, some people have asked me, a lot of people have asked me, of why Fuse. It was Edge before. Well, the simple answer is that other companies were using the word edge. And I have in the past uh, dealt with trademark issues and uh, not want to deal with that again. So uh, we did a little bit of research and we went to the word fuse because what we noticed we're effectively using real estate elements. So that's part of the training that we're doing. And, and it's more just how to leverage finance to benefit you and your clients. It's, it's, you know, I'm going to make it as neutral as possible. Um, and, and so whatever lender you use, you can kind of do the same thing. Most banks won't be as flexible. Big banks, they just, they're not going to do what we do. Uh, but usually mortgage brokers or smaller banks might. Um, but that's the, the idea behind Fuse is fusing together um, these two ideas, real estate and lending, which I think absolutely go together. I cringe when I hear people say, well, you know, we do the real estate, they do the lending, and that's that. Um, because there's so much power in the lending. There's so much that can be lost if the lending is not right. And so uh, that's part of it. And then the fuse, we've got the little flame on there, as you guys can see. Uh, and that was the genius of Alex. Way to go, Alex. Appreciate that. Um, okay. Thank you. So, Effectively, sales and marketing, you know, how you present yourself, uh, what you're going to do. I'm going to get into the basics because, again, we have a lot of agents that are, are fairly new. Um, veterans, hopefully you can share stories as well and, uh, and all of that. So I want to start, before we get into developing your list of contacts, just some basics about sales. And I've done a lot of different sales training. I've seen the Buffinis. I've seen all this stuff. Um, I... I to me, it's painful sometimes because a lot of it's common sense. So remember, you know, if you just use common sense and you use a good work ethic, you're probably going to get 99% of what you need right there. Um, there's a few little tricks of the trade and just tricks to sales in general. But 
this is a sales job. A lot of people forget that. They think they're in real estate because they love to look at mullion windows and leaded glass and um, you know, beautiful tile work and stuff like that. And that is part of it. That's great. I mean, to, to, to understand it, to know it, to master it is really part of the process. But a big, big, probably a bigger part of the process is how do you generate business. And it's really important to remember this sales job. And when you sell, you have to sell. You've got to look at it and you've got to be closing. Alex knows this, ABCs, and most of you guys know this, um, you know, always be closing. And real estate's the easiest conversation in the world to have. And I've done a lot of different sales jobs in my many, many years, um, and different sales trainings as well. And, and real estate is truly the easiest conversation because what you're doing is you're talking to people who either have it, want to get it, or want to get rid of it. And then there's different levels of sales in real estate because you got your primary residence and then you're like, you know what? Um, things are going pretty well. I've saved up a little bit of money. I'm thinking about an investment property. You know, we all have to kind of figure out our finances, our retirement and things like that. So a lot of people, hey, I want to get one investment property. I want to play the Dave Ramsey game and then buy another one, pay the off, then buy another one and so on and so forth. And some people get into commercial. They want to buy an apartment complex. Then they want to, um, you know, develop properties. So there's a lot of things people can do just from real estate to uh, enrich themselves and secure themselves and their families. But it always comes back to selling. We all got to sell. So the basics, uh, it's a work ethic. In this job, I find that some of the most difficult situations and, and when people come to me and they, and they say well joe i just i'm not generating enough business you know i don't know if i can cut it the first thing i think of is how hard are you working because in real estate you can just settle back and go you know what i kind of get out of bed at nine o'clock um and i can take my time having a big cup of coffee at the cafe and then i can make a few calls and run around a little bit and then I kind of, you know, friends are calling and they want to go out for a beer at 3 o'clock. And, and that there's the day. And the ones I see who are successful, they're the ones that they just go uh, straight forward. They're just like bulldogs. And they have a, a very disciplined in what they do. So, you know, 8 to 5, that's fine. We all have to work on weekends for the most part. Um, but you do have to work it as a full-time job. And um, if you are going to do it part-time, when you're spending that time working sales, you really have to focus. And uh, and those are the people that succeed. You know, I see we have lots of people here that are part-time real estate agents and they do 12 to 18 deals a year. We have lots of people who are full-time and they do 50, 60, 70 deals a year. Uh, we had a lot of people make over 400 a year last year. So um, you can make that money, but the ones that succeed have the consistent work ethic. They are up and at. They typically want to leave their, their homes. I'm that way. I cannot sit at home in my bunny slippers and try to sell. I just can't do it. So putting on uh, dress clothes, putting on a jacket, um, shaving, taking a shower. I mean, you know, I see all of that where people just don't do it. And real estate opportunities present themselves everywhere you go. I'll go back to that easiest conversation. People are very interested in real estate. Um, a lot of people just, they're interested in the value of their house. And that's one good way and one good technique to get into real estate and get into that conversation. Is what's my house worth? But um, I've seen it from a grocery store checkout lines to, um, I had this one a few years ago, a guy tuning up my lawnmower. That was, we started talking about real estate. He was interested in buying a house. So there are, if you're, if you present yourself well and you're aware that at every corner at, at, around every corner and every place you go there's an opportunity and if you're not talking to them about real estate somebody else is I and mean, we all know there's a ton of real estate agents out there um you know friends neighbors family the associations are are, are uh, minimal so you know one degree of separation everybody knows a real estate agent the key to succeeding is making sure you present yourself well make sure you work consistently hard at this job and that, um, you know, you learn your craft. Um, but, but those opportunities will present themselves um, as you go through your uh, daily routine 
Uh, we have a couple of agents here in Spokane. It's pretty funny. I mean, they just they just go and go and go and they talk to everybody that they see and uh, they get the word out that they're in real estate. And it's really amazing how many people respond to that. So remember that. Be professional. Be courteous um, and start that conversation with anybody and everybody. That is the key to starting it. Um, so we'll get we'll kind of get into that now with with our first topic is developing your list of contacts. So a lot of agents will come up to me, especially new ones, and they'll go, "Hey, what do I do? I mean, I just passed my test. I have no idea where to start." And the first thing I say is, you know, your list of contacts. Who is in your sphere of influence? And veterans, you guys have heard this before, um, but it's pretty standard. You have a sphere of influence. You have friends. You have family, um, and, and you have, you know, could be church, could be schools, could be a lacrosse club. You know, whatever your sphere is. Horse riding, as Alex knows, mine is Bigfoot and unicorns. Um, my lifelong quest to capture them both. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, on ongoing joke here in the office, but. Whatever your deal is, you know, leverage it. That's the key is to make sure people in those spheres of influence know you're in real estate. So develop a list, a simple Excel spreadsheet of my friends, my family, my previous clients, uh, people at church, people um, at my lacrosse club, people in my school, people, you know, wherever you do your life. Um, those people are out there and they want you to help them with real estate. Always remember that. It's not so much that you're trying to just get them to uh, buy or sell with you. Most of them have questions. They have concerns. They're interested. And so you really can provide a very uh, meaningful service to them. So develop that list of contacts. Write it down or type it in an Excel spreadsheet. It is just so key to be organized and not just have paper notes or paper cards lying around somewhere out there in your office. Um, try to be organized and get them into an Excel spreadsheet. Name, full name, address, um, a note, a phone number, and email address, obviously. And then that way, it makes it very easy to contact them, to send out newsletters, and we'll talk about those later on, but to communicate with them. And that's kind of what constant contact is all about, is having a way to communicate with your sphere uh, very easily. And um, so look into that as well. Constant contact uh, can be, and there's eye contact. There's a bunch of services that do it. Um, uh, we use, when we're mailing you guys, emailing you something, we try to go through MailChimp uh, because it's, it reduces the, the amount of spam. So, for example, when I send out 350 emails to everybody, you know, a lot of it goes to spam or gets kicked back. And it's, it's a little bit frustrating, but short of paying for everybody's outlook, and which would be thousands and thousands of dollars a month, um, we just go with the email you give us and we just try to email you. But... It's not as easy as you would think. Uh, we struggle with it every day. So, but you do if you have a special list of people, and um, it's you know it's uh, probably two minus two to three hundred people, and um, using constant contact or a service like that is a good way to communicate with them. And communicate with them at least once a month. But that um, it's very important to get that list set up and started. Okay. As you guys know or don't know, keep um, let's see, I'll go through the list of callers, make sure everyone is invited to join us. Um, so again, I invite you and we unmute. Oh, it was very minimal. Uh, William, yes, who showers? Um, <laughs> I do. I want to stay married. Okay. Clint, we sent you that unmute, let's see, unmute request to Kurt. I thought I sent these to you guys. But again, if you want to join us and share, there's two ways to do it. Oh, guy, I see you joined us. Ingrid, you joined us. Jackie is on web. Jeremy, Keith, and unmute. And Marie, they could have went in and it, no. Scott, unmute request. Karsh, unmute request. Okay. 
Um, did stop. And uh, yes, I can sing Barry Manilow, by the way. Um, Copa, right? Copa Cabana. Uh, Kurt, did you send mute request? I did, Kurt. Let me resend that. Do, 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 do. So Kurt, unmute request. Okay. So, and you can always go into the chat uh, area right there. Um, Alex is monitoring it. So, Alex, if you see something that I'm missing, if I'm just droning on, and there's a good question that comes up, um, you know, throw something at me. Yeah, I'll let you know. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm muted unless I have a comment. Thanks, Lynn. Um, okay, so that list of contacts, that sphere of influence, it's so important because there's lots of public business out there. Again, it could be a grocery store clerk, it could be, um, you know, it could be a lawn care person that just comes to your house. It's the sphere of influence. The public is, I look at it as like change. You know, that's change rattling around in your pockets. The public and, ref or I'm sorry, uh, your list of uh, sphere of influence and referrals, that's, those are the dollar bills. And it's fantastic when people just call you up and they say, hey, thanks for selling my house two years ago. We're going to do this now. Can you help us? We're going to sell this one, um, which is a $300,000 house. We want to buy this one over here that's a $500,000 house. It's like cha-ching. Um, obviously, there's work involved, but you know that's a pretty good way to start. Um, and, and when that happens, it's fantastic. That's where we want to all be. Um, so, uh, list of contacts. Now, mailers and phone calls. I want to kind of get into that next. Um, anything you do, as, as I go into mailers and phone calls and advertising, um, all this different stuff that you can do to help generate business, promote business, and your business. It is, it's really, really important that you have consistency. So that's the magic word in this section, consistency. Um, consistency is so important because the biggest failure I see out there, and I've done this myself, I've, I've failed doing this, where you set a budget, you're like, you know what, I'm gonna spend $1,000 a month um, on mailers, and I, I want to be consistent, so I want to do it for three or four months. That's not good enough. You want to be able to do it for a year. I mean, six months minimum, but a year is a lot better than six months. Um, and so then if it's $1,000 a month, you're talking about $12,000. So, oh, my gosh, you know, how can I, how can I do this and not see a return and I'll pay for it? Um, that's a question. That's a good question. That's one you're going to have to ask yourself and kind of budget accordingly. Now, one thing about this company that we all know is that you get to keep 100% of your commission. We all came from places where they took 30 or you know, 40%. If you're starting out new, um, God forbid, they're taking 50% of your paycheck with everything, um, all the ARs involved and franchise fees and all that. So there's a chunk of money you're saving here at Kelly Wright. We want you to save that. We want you to earn it, save it, but also to use it in marketing. Um, if you just, I, I mean, I suppose it's fine. If that's your plan to just kind of go with the deals that you get automatically and just keep all your money, that's fine. But uh, if it were me, and again, for the people that are really successful, they stick the money back into marketing. And so uh, having a 100% commission is a great way to go, okay, I'm going to take 20%, 30%, 40%, whatever it's going to be. And I'm going to stick that back into marketing consistently and then have to develop a plan for at least 12 months of how you're going to do that. So, I mean, it's very easy to just say, hey, I'm going to spend 20000 a month on radio. Well, <laughs> guess what? You know, three months go by and you don't get a phone call and you just spend $60,000. Yikes. So we want to start small. We want to be consistent and we want to be successful. So consistency is really important. Um, as I look down, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, if you guys, I'll just pop this up here real quickly if you don't have it. Um, I'm looking at this right here. So week two, sales and marketing. Ta-da! Um, so we're doing B right now, mailers and phone calls. And that is the fused training. Um, after this, when we when we send out <clears throat> the, um, the recorded um, training, then we'll send this training out as well this list this agenda so that's what i'm looking at when i i sent it out yes oh you did okay thank you so 
Apparently, uh, Alex has suggested our marketing genius that we're going to put my ugly mug on the camera. So, sorry, everybody. This is what we're do. Yeah, because it's, it's too hot if it's not open. Uh, everyone's trying to shut the uh, door to the conference room. <laughs> Apparently, they don't like my training. Okay, <clears throat> mailers and phone calls. So. Mailers are mailers are a really funny thing. Um, I've had really good success using mailers, and I've had awful uh, turnout or not not turnout. Awful. I don't want to say success. Awful failure. Um, the thing about mailers, and and if you're not aware of this, title companies have lists. They're called farm lists. So you can go to any title company and get a farm list where you're farming an area. And it could be a zip code. It could be houses that are assessed over $200,000. It could be, we used to be able to do credit scores. That was the best. Credit scores and people that bought subprime, bought their houses with subprime loans. Because you knew they wanted to either get out of the subprime loan um, or sell their house um, because they were going to be underwater in it. And the credit scores, uh, you knew that, that if they were buying and selling, that they had the credit score to do that. Um, but anyway, so a farm list is really key. You can get it from any title company. You want to identify what you're looking for. It could be, again, a neighborhood. It could be uh, around your church. It could be uh, whatever. And they'll send you, they'll even send you labels. I mean, that you can peel off and, and send to your clients. But you can also, with mailers, you can send them to mailing services. Now, we carried a bulk mailing license for years, and I found it to be really cumbersome because what it, the money that you save on a bulk mailing license doesn't really translate that well into a big overall cost savings. The reason is you have to spend so much time sorting everything out. you got to sort it by zip code, and then you put it in separate boxes, and then you got to drive it up to the airport. And then they're like, hey, wait, we reject this because it's not sorted right. Then you go back and you do it again. And I mean, it's just such a pain. So these companies like Cactus Printing, um, of course, you can use Vista Print and, and, and all that. I mean, remember this about any sort of advertising that you see. The more advertising you see is the amount of money they put out and they got to recover it. So. Um, I always look for companies that maybe advertise a little bit, but they're not saturating the radio and the TV because that's just an expense they got to get back in their pocket, which means higher prices. But Cactus Printing is one that I really like out of Arizona. And they will design for you a mailer. They will um, accept your Excel spreadsheet <clears throat> that is from the farm list uh, or just your Excel spreadsheet, whatever you want to do or integrate the two. They'll design it for you, they'll mail it out, and their fees are reasonable. So obviously they tack on a small fee per unit. Um, <clears throat> but with postage and all of that, it comes out to not a whole lot more than if you do it yourself. And you know, certainly putting stamps on letters uh, can take a long time too, and putting labels on stuff and then, and then mailing it. So I thought I have found cactus printing or services like that to be a better option from a time Oops, slow connection. No. Um, <clears throat> audio connection restored. So I get all these, it's kind of goofy. I'm still getting used to this, but I get all these little messages coming across my screen of audio restored, audio connection lost, all that stuff. So bear with me. But the farm list is a great way to go. Cactus printing is a good example of someone who can um, design a mailer. Remember, mailers have to be really simple. Any advertising you do, especially in print, has to be simple. Because the message is basically, while I'm taking this over to the garbage can, do I see your name and phone number and kind of remember you? Um, I used to do perforated uh, cards on the mailer so that they could kind of pull out my card and stick it in a drawer some, somewhere. Um, the idea that they see you they see real estate, and it's consistent. So every month they're getting that, and then, then when they're ready to sell, great, they call you, um, or don't. I mean, you know, it's real estate. So uh, the the funny thing about real estate sales is everyone will say, "Well, I'm not ready. You know, don't bother me. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready." Until they're ready, 
And then when they're ready, they want to sell their house in three minutes. So um, it's, it's amazing how fast when they make that decision. And that's why a lot of them will just they'll let their fingers do the walking. For those of us with gray hair, that's the yellow pages. For the young people, there was something called the yellow pages where you actually had to flip pages. But um, they will, they will uh, turn to the first real estate agent that they see. It might, could be a sign in their neighborhood. It could be advertising. It could be whatever. And strangers oftentimes. And, and you, people that have been in this industry, we've all heard it where someone's like, oh, I forgot you were in real estate. Oh, sorry about that. It's like, crap, that was a 330 thousand dollar house i mean that's a ten thousand dollar check so <clears throat> it sucks when that happens and it's happened to me it's happened to all of us that have been in real estate longer that's why the consistency is so important so if you're going to do mailers be consistent set a budget so if you go to something like something like cactus printing and your budget is five hundred dollars a month you're like okay for one year i can do six thousand dollars and if nobody responds I, i'm okay with that six thousand dollars Someone probably will. I've, I've never done a year-long campaign and not gotten the money back. I have done six-month campaigns where I have not gotten the money back. You know, so I spent six thousand dollars. I got one deal. It was forty-five hundred dollars uh, in commission, and so it just wasn't quite worth it. The longer the process, the longer the campaign, the more successful the consistency. I'm just going to keep hammering that because it is uh, an important part. Hi, Alex. Um. <clears throat> So I was just going to say, is there a place here where you can oh, see a blue screen? No, oh, maybe. You guys don't want to see my desktop? Okay. Most of it's clean. Um, I do have one file on my desktop. <laughs> it's it's uh, okay. You can see the desktop. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a bad word and competitions underneath it. So <laughs> hopefully you guys didn't see that. Um, we got to laugh in this industry. If you don't laugh, uh, you know, you're crying. Thanks, Alex. Um, okay, so mailers. And if you have questions about mailers, talk to me or Alex. Uh, we've both done a lot of them. And so it's, it's a very successful way to do it, but it's only one part of your success. Um, don't think mailers are the end all. Um, so you want to have a multiple pronged strategy of, of how you're going to sell. So, and again, I think Cactus Printing is a good one, but there's other companies that are like Cactus Printing. And they will design it for you and make it all pretty, make it very simple, your name, um, your, all your contact information, and that you are in real estate. Um, on those mailers, you can also put in there, um, sometimes I've had success, you know, valuation of your home, free valuation of your home. Um, something simple, something a like catchphrase. Remember, this is a, it's a 15 second to the garbage can. I see their name and number and I throw it away. And some people will keep it. That's the idea is that if you send 500 out, we're hoping that five people keep it. That they're like, you know what, maybe we're going to sell in the spring. I should, uh, I should keep this. So that, uh, those are mailers. Phone calls. Um, and actually, I'm going to add with phone calls, uh, knocking on doors. Uh, just because I, I love it. Uh, but phone calls, phone calls are a special thing. Um, and they're also a painful thing. Um, they are special because uh, you have to do it. You absolutely have to be making phone calls. Um, what's painful is that everybody's making phone calls. So uh, you've got so many people out there that are calling expired listings. Um, and when I say expired, make sure they are expired. Um, remember, if there is if there is a um, problem, I say that delicately. I wanted to say other words, but I shouldn't. There could be children listening. Uh, if there's a problem, I'm the one that hears about it. You know, when people are too irate, and we get a lot of people who are irate about uh, some of agents. Let's say it's one of our agents. We've had some of our agents be irate at other agents from other companies. They get irate when someone's trying to solicit their expired listing. That's fine. You can ex you can look at an expired listing and go ahead and solicit it uh, along with 30 other people that day. So, the competition is pretty fierce. What you can't do, if something's withdrawn from the MLS, it's still under contract. So it has to be expired, expired. So make sure you understand that distinction and make sure you uh, follow the rules. Bring this up on the screen. It doesn't oh. matter how big you can it. still see the desktop. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can enlarge it here. They still see a small 
Um, do you screen agenda? Okay. Okay. Now we'll go back. Back. Okay, that's a better view. Um, so uh, phone calls are really important. You, you got to make them, and you got to make them consistently. Those of you that have worked for bigger companies where they plug you in, I mean, you know, this is this is the grand formula. Come join our group. You know, you're going to be successful. We're going to make you millions of dollars. You know, it's goofy. What they're really doing, and we all kind of know the main company that does this, what they're doing is they're just plugging you into a phone. They're saying, here's a list of uh, 200 people every day, and just call them like everybody else. Just call them. Dial in for dollars. There's success to be found. I mean, if you if you make 10 phone calls, you're going to get someone who's kind of there. Like, oh, maybe. And some of the other FUSE training we do, I want to make sure that, you know, for every 10 calls you make, you get one. That you have a distinct advantage over people that are um, – also calling FISBOs for sale by owners or expired listings and things like that. Um, calling up someone like that and just saying, hey, I'm really great. I'm the best real estate agent out there. Well, guess what? There's 10 other people calling and they're saying the same thing. They're really great as well. Fuse training, what we're doing is giving you actual meat on the bone. We're actually trying to say, sorry for the vegetarians out there. Um, we are trying to give you a substance where you have a significant advantage over the competition. So um, that that is going to be coming later on in our training. So finance one, finance two, and then Kelly Wright Fuse, we're just going to be talking about that. That's where I'm really going to get into the advantages we can give you when you're making phone calls. But phone calls are really important. You have to make them. I think I always I always wonder what the burnout factor is. For me, it's about 20 phone calls. If I make more than 20 phone calls in a day, I kind of got a little bit of burnout there. Uh, do, uh, working out the bugs. Thanks, Alex, for getting on those. I kind of ignored chat the chat room there for a little bit. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So for me, the burnout factor is about 20 phone calls. Um, and, and it, you know, if you do that consistently every day, you're talking about 100 phone calls a week. Now, if you're an animal like Alex, Alex can do 200 phone calls in a day. And he's pretty cool with that. Um, but I think for most people, the average person, you get burnt out on that. And that's when, when you go to companies, uh, the big box companies, and they plug you in, and they say, here's a list, make 200 phone calls. You do it for a couple of weeks, and it's like, oh, my God, I am dying here. This is so awful. And then you get one. The disappointing part is then you get one, and the head of that group and the company and everything else, they take 50%. And you're like, damn, that was uh, that was bittersweet. So, because we see it all the time, people coming from those companies, and they're like, I'm just, you know, I'm I'm good enough at this on my own, but I want the independence, and I want to keep 100% of my commission. And I get that. That's why we're set up the way we are. But you you can't neglect marketing. So making some phone calls every day is really critical if you want to be successful. Don't ever neglect the phone calls. Um, and when you make the phone calls, you know, it's pretty simple. It's just, hi, Joe Kelly with Kelly Wright Real Estate. I just wanted to call and touch base with you and find out if there's anything I can do for you uh, with regards to your house or price your house and give you an estimate of its value. A lot of times you got to have thick skin. A lot of times people are going to be just click. A lot of times they're going to say bad words and tell you to go places that nobody wants to go. You just have to have thick skin. You just got to be able to say, okay, it was a no, click, and get on to the next one. And, and eventually there's people out there that are uh, polite and are looking for some real estate help. But develop, the point is develop a script. And so if you're going to make those phone calls, type out a very succinct script. You want to be able to get it out there within just 10 seconds. Um, it's kind of like the elevator script we used to talk about in sales. You know, when you're in an elevator with somebody, can you get your sale across in the 10 or 15 seconds you have to go to the eighth floor? So you want to be able to have a script and you want to be able to follow it. And then it's just consistency. Boom, boom, boom. So phone calls are a great way to generate business, but um, it's not the only way. And you have to be, again, consistent doing it. At least at least three times a week. I mean, schedule it. I always found I was more successful going, you know what, I'm going to make phone calls on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and I'm going to make them from 10 to noon. Um, but after those two hours, I'm done. It's, it's, it's too much. I can't handle it anymore. 
Um, so whatever you can handle and your abilities and your desires and your goals, set them and then follow them closely. Consistency, right, Alex? What's our word of the day? Absolutely. Oh, and then the the <laughs> I love it. Hope you guys are having right fun here. with the bullpen. Um, uh, yeah, Zillow has great you scripts. You can't hear me, no. Joe? You can't hear me? I, no, I say you couldn't hear me? I, I, oh, I can hear you now. Uh, just am I cutting out? Oh, okay. Um, and Alex is going to send out, he's going to send out some of the, the stuff that Zillow has. So Zillow has real estate websites. I think they're 10 bucks a month. And so you kind of have your own website. They have different, different scripts you can use. And so there are some services there that are pretty handy. And Alex has been working on those to get them out to you guys. So, um, there's, uh, there's a bunch of different real estate websites out there. And I think, you know, part of sales and marketing, that's the marketing part it is important to have your own website i think it's it's um it, it, it describes who you are it describes why you're different it describes um why you fit into a particular group again it could be you know bigfoot and, and unicorns um there's people out there that buy houses everybody buys houses no matter what group they're in so and you can do that on our landing page that we set up for you but typically in a perfect world you want to have your landing page and then you want to have a link to your website and then your website with a link to your Facebook and social media and have all that. But I don't want to get into that quite yet because uh, it's on our list, as you guys can see. Phone calls. Then uh, to finish with phone calls, actually, I'm going to take it one step further. Ha-ha. Good segue. Step further. Knocking on doors. A lot of you guys, well, Frank, I see. Yeah, uh, let's take questions on this. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, and best, if you guys do have a question, probably best to do it in the chat room. And again, Alex can say, hey, there's a question here if I'm missing it. Uh, he's monitoring the chat room more than I am. Um, so if the question comes up, we'll try to get to it so the best we can. Um, yes, LinkedIn, of course. Uh, any social media, Lynn, you want to you wanna set up. But we're getting to that. Let me finish with these steps. Stepping, stepping, walking in a neighborhood. Oh, my gosh. This is, it is the funniest thing in the world. It's the, the greatest success rate we see are people that actually walk neighborhoods. This is old, like, 60s encyclopedia sales. Um, I think because so many people got away from it in the 80s, 90s, and then with, with uh, online services, online sales, things like that, you know, they're just, there's no need for a Hoover. What, Actually, what was the really good vacuum cleaner? Um, was it the who? Kirby. The big heavy one. Kirby. Anyway, uh, that and um, encyclopedias. So those things are dinosaurs. They kind of went away. But people used to walk door to door trying to sell these. If you walk door to door politely, succinctly, giving your card out and saying, hey, I'm a neighbor of yours. If you have any real estate questions, I really appreciate, you know, giving me a call. I would love to help you. Um, Jan, yes, when you have an open house, knock on the doors around it for leads. Absolutely. Let neighbors know that you're doing an open house. Just And you can politely just say, hey, I'm doing an open house down here at 123 Elm Street. I just wanted to introduce myself and let you know. Come on down. We've got uh, cake and cookies. It's fantastic. Who doesn't like cake and cookies? So it's a good way to introduce yourself. But People that, and, and I see this all the time, where they get a little bit desperate. They're like, God, I don't have any sales right now. And I suggest go knock on doors. And there's like a, a 1 in 10 hit ratio. That sounds like more like a hit man. But it's a 1 in 10 success ratio. Um, so a lot of people, they'll, they'll go out there and, yeah, people are like, no, no, they're not home. No, no, I'm not interested. One person might say, here's my pit bull. I'm going to unleash him on you. And then guess what? There's grandma. And she's like, you know what? It's time for me to. It's time for me to call my house. Um, great, let's have a conversation. Always be closing. Remember, it's schedule things. I just automatically schedule. Great, I would love to talk to you about this and meet you at your home. When's a good time for me to come back and really um, get to know you? And oh, uh, four o'clock. And then always throw out a time. I'm going to go back to basic sales training. Always throw out a time and an option. 
Okay, so if it's Tuesday at two or Thursday at one, which day works better for you? Okay, so it's an open-ended question. It's not a simple, does Tuesday at two work for you? No. Does Wednesday at three work for you? No. And you get, so you're getting those uh, yes or no responses and it kind of dies down. So you wanna give them options. So if, you're, if, you're, if you get to that point, always set an appointment and then give them an option. Love to come back and talk to you uh, on free Tuesday at one o'clock, or I can meet with you Wednesday at three o'clock. Which one works better for you? Okay, so always be asking. Um, sorry, I'm just, my phone beeps a lot, and so I look at it occasionally. Make sure there are no emergencies out there. Um, so knock it on doors. What a, what a great way to go. I absolutely love it. Um, and the success rate's really high. It's, it's, if, you're, if you're ever in a, at a point where you're like, you know what, I really need to get a listing or a sale like right now, go knock on doors in your neighborhood and give them your car. Dress professionally. Make sure you're clean and approachable. Um, you know, if you got your camo gear on, <laughs> and you got your face painted because you're going hunting in a couple hours, probably not the best time to be walking the neighborhood and spooking the neighbors. Um, and for all you hunters out there, hey, love it, respect it. I love hunting, but, you know, time and a place. We're selling, so be professional, dress professional. And uh, it's always amazing to me, The um, and, and granted, they're guided by God, uh, but the people that the that are either selling a religion or just trying to talk to people about their religion, you know, they're persistent and they're successful. There's a reason they keep doing it is they're successful. So um, some people are lonely. You, you never underestimate how lonely someone is. If they're living alone and you're, you come to them and you talk to them. They're like, wow, okay, great. Now the other thing about phone calls, knocking on doors, mailers, any sort of communication you have, um, referrals are absolutely key. And we'll get into that as the last section, but um, always be asking for the appointment, give them multiple options, and then set it. And then follow up. Once you set that appointment, you want to follow up and, uh, and, and make sure that, that you're still on for Thursday at 3. Um, okay. So phone calls, mailers, walking, advertising. Let's get into advertising a little bit. Actually, each section I'll take a little break. And uh, as you know, my tea. Got to take a sip of tea, and then I'll read the chats. Jackie's got a good one. Um, true story. I decided to go up to a house in my neighborhood. Nice lady opens the door. I told her that I loved her house and that if she ever thought about selling, I would love to help her. Long story short, appreciate that. She invites me in, shows me around have a nice chat, then she looks at me and asks, I have two other houses on this street. Could you help me with those two? Wow, Jackie, nice, great example. Um, so yeah, it, it, it works. Um, it's amazing though, let me put it to this, this way, let me rephrase that. Don't get discouraged. That is so important, do not get discouraged. Um, some people, you know, some people are just mean. You know, they say they say no, and they say it in an emphatic way, maybe with some cuss words, with their Rottweiler behind them. I mean, yeah, it's it's a little bit intimidating. It's, it can shake you a little bit. Have thick skin and go. You know what? It's just a no. And one of the basics of sales is, hey, you gotta take nine or ten no's to get to a yes. Okay, it's like me in high school asking girls out on dates. I needed a hundred no's before someone would say yes. So you got to say, you got to just keep in your rhythm. Don't get discouraged. Stay positive. Get a bunch of no's and even have this positive spin on it. Say, fantastic. I just got another no. Great. I'm closer to my yes. I just got another no. Fantastic. I'm closer to my yes. The yes is coming soon. So you have to really be positive about it and just be persistent. And uh, good things will happen promise you that. I've been in sales long enough and I see it, this overarching um, company now with 350 agents, I see the successes and I see the failures. And that persistence and that consistency is really important. Okay, so advertising. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, Jan says uh, nextdoor.com, sign up nextdoor.com in your area, go around and talk to people. 
about a great way to get in the door. Um, thanks, Jeb. Um, boom, boom, boom. Next door, Annie. I can only take one no. <laughs> Annie, you can take more than one no. I know you can. Um, you do have to have thick skin. It's um, we're in sales, so that's one of the key elements. Um, I do know Annie Shaw is very tough, so I don't believe you there. Um, okay, so advertising. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go in advertising. You, you all have, again, you have to have a budget. You have to be able to say, okay, this is going to cost X amount of money. I have to be consistent with it. What are my expectations? How do I want to budget and sell my uh, product? Uh, print is a, it's a decent way to go. I've never found a whole lot of success in it. Uh, we found more success, or I found more success, you know, going into the real estate section, for example, and just having a bold um, mortgage advertising, but that's not real estate sales. So I'm not a huge fan of print advertising. Um, magazines can be a little bit better. Um, and if any of you guys have stories on print advertising, newspapers, things like that, uh, let me know. We've done billboards before, and I've seen some success with billboards. But again, a lot of this, a lot of it is kind of a basics of advertising. You want to touch a person five times, metaphorically. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're able to. Uh, they're driving around town. They see you on a billboard. They kind of open up a magazine a couple days later. They see you. Then they drive by a sign of yours. And as, you, as they see it five times, you're kind of in their head a little bit. You, your name is starting to register and stay in their brain. So that's one of the keys to advertising is staying in their brain. How do we get in the brain? Um, and so traditionally, different business schools and advertising agencies talk about five times. Five times you're, um, once they see you, you're in. So... The point of that is all of this stuff is part of those five hits. You don't want to you don't want to say, you know what, I'm going to put a billboard up with my name and and that's going to be it. You want to couple that with other forms of advertising um, and again, being consistent. So if you do a billboard, then you're talking about eight hundred dollars a month. If it's in a good part of town, maybe six hundred if it's in a less desirable part of a smaller billboard. But a big billboard is roughly eight hundred to a thousand a month. And uh, so you want to make sure that, that you're doing other forms of advertising so that they see the billboard and then they like, oh, wow, that person is uh, also here in this mailer. And, you know, put a billboard in a strategic location, a certain neighborhood, and then you can do an, a mailer out in that neighborhood. So common sense and targeting your market, keeping it concise, better to take a rifle approach and just go, you know what, I'm taking my neighborhood, these six blocks here and focusing on them, and then expand from that. Obviously, all of this is, hey, I've had success, success in this market, I'm gonna expand. Um, and other lead sources like Zillow, we'll get into that later and expanding that, but print is not my favorite form of advertising. Magazines are okay, but again, it's expensive and you're not probably not going to see an immediate return. It's, it's a matter of going, you know what, I can put $500 a month into um, this magazine and do it for a year, but I'm doing all these other things on top of that, that this is just a supplemental way to advertise. As you're probably getting the message in this section, section C, these are supplemental ways to do it. I think mailers, phone calls, knocking on doors are direct ways to market yourself. Advertising is kind of a secondary way to um, market yourself. Um, radio can be successful. Radio is a weird game though, and, and I've done radio before. It's expensive, so it's kind of at the top of the charts expensive wise, and um, you have to be very careful about you know not spending too much money on, on radio advertising. Um, but you have to be consistent. So if someone hears your ad for a month, and then again they're they're gonna they decide to sell in four months, well that radio advertising went away, and they kind of went to whomever because they lost track of you, and they don't didn't really remember you. The consistent radio advertisers are the ones that are successful, and um, it's probably something you would get into as you ratchet up 
if you are one of the more successful real estate agents and you have a bundle of money to say, you know what, I'm going to put $5,000 a month into this. And we have a bunch of agents here, $10,000 a month. Uh, they'll put into advertising and that will help them generate $360,000 a year. So they're spending $120,000, they're generating three sixty, dollars and they're netting two forty. dollars Pretty good. I'll take it. Um, so, but radio is not something you probably want to get into right away. Certainly, you know, call me or email me if you're thinking about radio. I can tell you my stories um, personally, what's happened. Um, and it's great, too. You get a lot of attention. A lot of people around town at soccer games are like, oh, yeah, I heard your radio ad. That's great. That's great. That's great. Um, but then you start going, must start going by, and you've spent $5,000 a month, and now you're 15000 in the hole after three months. And it's like, oh, my God, I just spent $15,000, and I don't have a lead out of this. So it can be a little scary there. So this is more of an advanced level of like, okay, I can I can spend $50,000. Um, okay, my connection is restored. Um, I can spend X amount of money and, and really be able to sustain it. Now, we also know in, in – Real estate is not something where you advertise and then people go into your brick and mortar store and they start spending money and you've recovered it right away. Let's say you spend three months, you don't get anything. The fourth month, you get a couple listings and then you got to sell them. And you're not going to see a check for another three months or two months. So you really have to be careful budgeting and I think taking baby steps and starting small and building up is the best way to do that. Um, but radio, radio can work, but it's a, it's a high level, it's high level advertising and they're going to ask for at least six month commitment and probably a year. So you have to be really ready to commit that kind of money. Um, real estate books, you don't have to commit as much. Uh, that's a good way to get your name out there. A lot of people pick up the real estate magazines. They're not as, um, they're not as, uh, prevalent as they used to be. Um, again, those of us that have been in the industry a long time, uh, they used to bring into the office just a pallet of, of real estate books every week. And these were these were the MLS books. But you'd be paging through that stuff, and it's like, okay, great. These ones just came on the market. And um, you didn't really know when they went contingent. You had to make a lot of phone calls, and it was just a more cumbersome world. And it's the same with these real estate books. You know, Who's picking up real estate books at the grocery store when they can just get online? Uh, it's all online. All this information is an IDX feed from the MLSs to whatever source it's going to be, including our website, uh, including Zillow, including whomever. Um, so all that information is out there. It's the same information, and real estate books don't get the attention they used to. Um, because of that, I think the price is fairly decent, and um, you can split it with people. It's a good way to say as you're getting listings or you're soliciting listings, saying I'll put your listing in a real estate book. Um, it's, it's, it's not a bad way to uh, get your name out there a little bit. But again, it's not the end all. Each one of these things are supplemental. And this is something you're going to want to do in, in uh, addition to your other marketing. Um, and again, people see in the real estate book and then they drive by a billboard and they're like, hey, wait, there's, uh, there's Joe Kelly up there. And I just saw him in the real estate book. Okay, and I got a mailer a month ago and I kind of remember this name. So um, oh, let me just keep checking, make sure there's no emergencies. Um, so that's what, that's what you want to do when you're dealing with these print ads. I mean, start small. If you have a bigger budget, great. If you're like, you know what, I got... $30,000 here, I'm going to commit that for the year, that's $2,500 a month, okay. But make sure you have uh, your primary advertising and your supplemental advertising, you're consistent with it, and you focus on it. Okay, so that's the advertising part of it. Um, I don't have on here uh, one really, really key thing I wanted to talk about in the beginning, so I'll just interject here um, after my tea. I got to stay awake. Uh, at my age, you wake up at four in the morning and you go, oh my gosh, can't get back to sleep. So, a lot of tea and coffee. Some of you know the drill. Um, what was I going to say? Advertising, print, uh, real estate, books, etc. Oh God, I totally lost that train of thought. Oh, um, no, 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 no. 
Alex, what was it? We were talking about it the other day. Uh, you said you wanted to interject in the beginning. Um, yeah, I wanted to interject in the beginning about, um, God, it'll come to me. All right, and that's also getting older. You lose you lose your train of thought a lot. Um, we're going to get to listing booster. I've got that. So um, it, had, it had just had to be a, a reminder about consistency. It's about, oh, yeah, that was it. Bingo. Um, sales. When you're in sales, the thing that drives me crazy, and we saw this with the leads that we were generating and offering to people, was they weren't following up. They just weren't on top of it right away. In this game, and no matter what sales you're in, but in real estate sales, we're talking time is key. So, you know, if, if you're out doing something, that's what these cell phones are for. If you get a lead, call them right away. Don't wait 10 minutes. Don't wait five minutes. Call them immediately and set that appointment. It is so key to getting back to people right away. And some people measure that. It, it, I'm always surprised at how many people are like, well, he didn't get back to me in, you know, within 10 minutes. So it's not, it's not the right choice for us. And you could be really, really busy. You could be in the hospital doing whatever. And, and um, they just, yeah, they're, they're, they want a response right away. Because they want to know that if they have an issue or a question, they can call you and you'll get back to them right away. So be really consistent about getting back to people immediately, not tomorrow, not this afternoon, right away. And that's a key to success. Develop that habit immediately. Okay. Um, I knew I'd forget it, but then I knew it would come back because that's how my brain works. Um, websites. To, to, to social media and SEO. Um, SEO, uh, search engine optimization, quite a buzzword out there, a buzz acronym. So you hear a lot about SEO right now. Um, there's a lot of people writing about it, talking about it, selling it. Uh, and we'll kind of get into it. Um, the basics of it. I don't want to get into it in depth, number one, because I don't understand it in depth. Um, I, the further, the deeper I get into a computer, the less I know. But I can give you the basics of it, and it does have to do with your websites and your social media. <clears throat> so we had talked about uh, a Zillow website for 10 bucks a month. There's a bunch of other companies that'll do a real estate website for 25 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month. I would suggest getting one. If, if you're serious, it's a good thing to have. Again, you can design it however you want to. You can have your picture on it. You can have pictures of your community, your interest. Um, you can put all that stuff in there and, and really, really make it yours so that people can identify with you and know you a little bit better. So your own website is better than not having one or relying on the landing page that we have here at the at the company. Now the landing page is designed to link to your website. So you can link to your website again, you can link to social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, all that. And it's really important to develop that stuff. Um, that way you can you can put your own listings up there. Now if you want to have a search engine on your own website, that is an IDX feed. It's an inner data exchange feed. Every MLS has them, and they have a form that you sign. I'll have to sign it as well, and then a third-party authorization if you're working with a website company, that, and they, um, they've got you know, some people there. They've got their special kind of designed search engine. They're going to need to get authorization from the MLS, and that is that IDX third-party authorization form. Um, but develop the best website you can. We don't do that for you. I, it's a, um, it's an interesting conundrum we have. I would love to. I'd love to be able to develop a brand new website for all of you. We just don't make enough money. Again, I want to keep the money in your pocket. 100% commission uh, is really important. Well, so these are things that you have to go. Okay, there's a little bit of a trade-off. So well, my own little website. Again, Zillow's a good one. Um, but I'm going to develop my own little website, and I'm going to manage it and all that. Um, Alex is good for answering questions, but he will not develop it for you, nor will he pay for it for you. Um, so we have, we're on a very tight budget. We keep things pretty lean, um, again, so you can keep 100% of your commission. 
Um, so once you get the website up and running, you want to be able to attach social media to it. And, and when I say that, ugh, I say it kind of cringing um, because I'm not a big social media guy. I'm old school. It's like, look, you know, I don't want people to find me. I don't want to be accessible. I certainly don't want the world to hear my opinions because I share those with close family and friends. Um, so it, it, I was always hesitant to join Facebook. And Alex, uh, he, he said, yeah, you got to do this. And the SEO people said, I've got to do this. So I did. And so it's tied in. The SEO, the Facebook part of it is tied into our website. Um, and so the more activity that is on Facebook, the bigger, better, more robust website we have. And so I'll just meld those two together. Um, search engine optimization. It's a Google algorithm. So when people type in real estate in uh, White Salmon, Washington, well, uh, there's a bunch of companies that will come up. And it could just be real estate. It could be Hood River, what, you know, whatever. There's probably, if you type that in, there's going to be a company there that is White River Real Estate. And um, so there's, there's the reason that they're at the top of that search engine is because their website has more connections to White River and real estate. And the connections are in SEO. They're uh, constant additions to SEO, constant additions to social media, constantly uh, applying new blogs, new information. Um, Keith knows this. I don't know, Keith, if you're still on or not, but Keith has a website with, uh, ooh, I think you said, Keith, 26,000 followers. I mean, something amazing like that. But the more information, the more people are, are sharing, the more people that are blogging, the more people that are applying fresh information into there, it's going to boost your website. And that's the key to it. There are companies out there, uh, Conversion with a K is one of them. You pay $1,500 or $1,800 a month. What they do is they develop three or four websites for you, and they're all kind of around keywords. It could be uh, you know, Coeur d'Alene, real estate, realty in Coeur d'Alene, um, better living in Coeur d'Alene. I mean, they develop these dot-coms around what you want. And then they pump information into uh, Facebooks that are attached to those websites. And effectively, they're managing it for you for $1,800 a month. So you can look into that if you want. Um, it's, a, it's an expensive way to do what you can kind of do on your own organically. But creating your own website and attaching LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and all this stuff, and then actively every day using that, and um, typing in information, typing in opinions, sharing information, all of that is part of the SEO algorithm. And so you'll, you will organically rise up in those search engines on Google. So what, then when they do type in uh, real estate in um, Clackamas, then you're going to come up, or you can potentially. I mean, remember, there's a lot of competition out there. So. Uh, the SEO website world in real estate, I mean, I, I think someone told me, a professional told me, it's right behind insurance, but very close. And so it's very, very competitive. But you will be found a lot easier. You can pump up organically into that first or second page by constantly adding information. Once you neglect your website or you neglect your social media and you're not putting fresh information in there, it's going to go down because there's other companies that are doing that. They're pumping theirs up. And, and as you pump yours up, more people will follow you, more people will join you, more people will see you. And that is part of the website, social media, SEO advantage. Um, we do it with our website, and, and uh, Alex is on that, trying to add information. We're working on our blog right now and adding that. And, and trying to add as much information as we can on the Facebook side of it. So it is all tied together. Um, and, and if you guys do want to create your own website, I highly encourage it. Okay. And then, you know, Google SEO. Google social media and how it affects my website. 
Uh, you can Google, yeah, how does SEO affect my website or what to do to optimize my search engine or other search engines looking for me. So there's a lot of information out there in the web world. Uh, take advantage of it, read it, learn about about it, and, uh, and develop your own website. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, chat room. Do to do Jan. Uh, Five thousand is the max you can have on Facebook without permission. Um, I think Keith has permission. I actually had another agent go, "Wow, Keith, have you seen his Facebook? He's got twenty-something thousand um, likes or friends or something like that." So, anyway, Keith knows, and, and congratulations, Keith. That is a very, very impressive number. And right there, Keith has a sphere of influence. You've, you've got twenty-six thousand people on Facebook. Oh my gosh, I mean, you know, you're just sharing information with them and what you do and constantly reminding them that you're in real estate and voila, there is your business. So, uh, Alex says a business page can have unlimited likes, I believe. Okay. Um, website, social media, any other questions out there, you guys? Any successes, other successes you guys have seen with websites? Uh, Leslie, I see you joined us. I don't know if I sent you a, maybe I did. Oh, check the list. There's an unmute all feature, Joe. Um, Is there? But I think some people want to be. Yeah, there's right below in the chat thing you see all muted, all not muted. I don't know if you have that in your list of people online. I don't know that I do. But we can go over it later. We'll we'll, yeah, we'll get I, I got, I'm taking notes. I got a, so. Okay. Um, that's fine. So again, if, if it's an emergency or you're like, wait, 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 I've got this story to share. Um, just put it in the chat room and Alex will see it. Um, and I will I will probably see it. Um, yep, Keith confirmed. Utkarsh, we'll see you later. Thanks. Um, and again, this is recorded, so we'll send this out and we'll continue to kind of keep expanding and growing these trainings. It's a big part of what I want to do. It's what I like to do. Um, this is this is kind of my favorite part of the day and the week, so um, I'm happy to be doing it. Um, but I do want to expand it and, and eventually get a lot of people to join us and uh, yeah, learn something. Okay, so Zillow and other lead sources. Um, Zillow is a funky thing. I, I I dream about Zillow and I have nightmares about Zillow. Um, it's such a goofy thing in, in my book in a lot of ways. Uh, and here, here's why. It's competing with us real estate wise. And it's lifeblood are really real estate agents paying their fees and paying their for their uh, areas. And but at the same time, it's offering an opportunity for people to sell their house on their own and kind of avoid real estate agents and have all this information that we used to have access to that they didn't. Um, so they're going to have to be really careful about how they balance that. They, they, they don't want to put real estate agents out of business because that really is their lifeblood. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that in the future. But Zillow is here to stay. I don't know how they got that name. I wonder if it's from Zilla uh, out by Yakima. I don't know because they are Seattle guys. Um, but anyway, Zillow's here to stay. Unfortunately, we have to use it because our clients are using it. Um, it does make me cringe. People are like, oh, yeah, I saw this on Zillow. I'm like, oh, my God, okay. Um, the algorithm they use is just not even close to perfect uh, because they don't take into account those neighborhoods where you've got you know beautiful houses on the bluff and three blocks in you've got um, crummy houses. You have houses with views and then you got crummy houses just a block away underneath it with no views. And they're kind of pooling them all together and then taking tax assessed values. And we all know those are not accurate. And they're putting it together into this algorithm that comes up with this estimate. Now, they're smart enough to go, that this estimate could be, you know, a $100,000 gap or range. So that part is, is uh, encouraging to me. 
But I always look at Zillow because our clients do. So I want to know if I'm taking a listing, I want to make sure that I know what they're looking at. Because you know they have already. I promise you. They've looked at it and they see their house is uh, estimated at 210 and the tax assessed value is 189 and you're looking at comps going, wait, this thing's probably worth, I guess, you know, it depends on the market you're in, but you say it's worth 220. Okay, good. I think it's worth more than they've estimated and the assessed value. But sometimes it comes in below that. And that can be a problem as they as they start going, uh, hey, wait a second, you know, why don't you think you can get this estimated value or the assessed value? And then you have to be honest with people about, well, you know, you got uh, mold in the corner up there and, you know, you've got plywood for floors and you got these cracked windows and it uh, looks like someone was cooking meth here a month ago. It's all the different things that come with distressed properties. Um, so you just have to be careful about that. And, that, and that's the encouraging sign and the encouraging part of us and Zillow is that we're the ones that can make an accurate assessment. They can't. They, no algorithm in the world is going to be able to accurately make that assessment. So that's where the human element comes in. So that part is good. Um, so you can start with Zillow because they're looking at it. And then you can also get some kind of accurate information on there. Um, I'll give you an example. Tax assessed value. Okay, so they say it's uh, $1,500 a year. Well, you go to the assessor's. I just did this yesterday. You go to the assessor's website, and it's actually $1,700 a year because Zillow's got 2015 taxes in there. They don't have 2017. So you want to make sure you research all these little uh, pieces um, and then begin your um, your CMA or you know however you're going to value a house, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, but Zillow is a good way to generate some business. So I'll get more into, aside from their website, to what they offer you guys. So you basically pay them for an area. And they'll say, I think if I remember the last time I did this, they were talking about um, exclusivity. And I'm like, well, that, that word doesn't really make sense when there's seven other agents that have access to the same area. And effectively, they're in a rotating basis. The more money you pay Zillow, the higher percentage you will be in that rotation. I mean, it's just it's, it's common sense. The more money you give them, the more you'll be out there. And again, because so many people go to it, you know, your face pops up and, uh, you know, I'd love to value this house or not working with an agent, contact me. And you will get business out of it. But again, I found it very close, pretty good at the algorithm. Um, when, let's say you have one zip code, you're probably not going to break even on that $500 a month. You need to have multiple, two or three. And then with two or three, you probably will do okay. But, you know, you're talking $1,500 a month or $1,200 a month. And you want to get to a point where if I'm going to spend $1,200 a month, I want to be getting a deal at least every other month um, or every month. Now, the more area codes you have or the more zip codes you have, um, the more business you'll generate. It is a numbers game. And we have a lot of people that are spending 6000 a month on Zillow. And I'll give you a good formula. Uh, we have somebody that spends about 6000 a month on Zillow. They have multiple zip codes, a, a bunch of them. And so at 6000 is $72,000 a year. Well, they grossed 250000 a year. So they're netting one eighty ish And so the more money you put into advertising, the more you'll get out of it. And that's a pretty good living. That's $15,000 a month income. And uh, so you can, you can really leverage Zillow to make a lot of money. We have some other agents that uh, do more than that. They, they, they've got... 20 to 40 good leads a month. Now, again, it doesn't matter how much money you spend and how many leads you get if you don't call them back. You've got to call them right away. And the people that are effective using Zillow, if they get something on their phone that says, you know, I'm interested in a house at 123 Oak Street, boom, they just call them right there and then. If you don't call them, they'll coach you on this as well. So they do offer that service. If you don't call them right away, they're gone. you lost them. So um, you can't. And, and the part of that is it's annoying because, you know, you might be at a restaurant, you might be at your kid's recital, you might be at the library, Alex. Uh, and so 
it's a, you know, it's annoying to have to stand up and get out and take a phone call. But if you want to be effective with Zillow, you have to be taking those phone calls right away. And they do coach that. So if you're just getting into it, you know, try a zip code. Try just one zip code and, and see how it works. You're probably, if you're lucky, you're going to break even. So you want to go into that knowing it that you you're going to need two, three, four zip codes to be successful. And that's what we, that's the number that we see uh, from a success ratio. Let's see what we're doing here. Alex. Uh, da, 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 da. Willow trees, honey, the word pillow, actually part of the name, primarily Zillow is a play on the zillions of data points. The company now, the company digest to come up with home values estimate. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Genius. So Ingrid says, uh, First American Title and Escrow is teaching some specific classes on using your Facebook business page to get leads. Um, good, yes. Um, First American Title is coming up with a lot of good stuff. Uh, they are the escrow company I typically use. Um, and so... Yeah, talk to your reps uh, if they are indeed doing that. Facebook business page to get leads. So thank you, Ingrid. Um, so, yeah, Zillow, Zillow it's, it's, it's kind of an animal that we're just not going to get rid of. It is, it's here to stay. Um, I'm sure it'll evolve into something bigger, badder, hopefully better. I know they're making changes. And they're trying to implement those changes with the MLSs because the MLSs call me and go, hey, what do you think of these changes? So they are constantly trying to improve their product. But ultimately what they're doing is saying, okay, they're going to they're gonna add some fear to you and your marketing, saying if you don't market with us, you're going to miss the boat. And I don't know that that's necessarily true, but I also don't, you know, I, 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 I think Zillow, there's a success rate there that you can see. So try it if you want. Um, you can always get out of it. You can try. You can try it for a few months. Again, anything you do, it has to be consistent. If you just, if you're like, you know what, I'm gonna try the Zillow zip code for three months. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna see a return on your money. So if you do two Zillow zip codes for nine months, you will see a return. You'll probably get your money back. Um, it does work. People do call. They do click the buttons. They do see your face and go, you know what, I am interested in this house. I want to I want to contact that person. Um, so those leads are out there, but it's expensive. You know, everything costs. And the only way to get above that cost is to really get above it. So, again, kind of like radio and other marketing channels, as you grow and you expand and you throw more money at marketing, you will get more return. Um, I, but, again, I, I want to remind you, I reiterate this, People that don't get back to the leads right away lose. You have to contact those leads immediately. And uh, and if you don't, you're just throwing money out the window. Okay. But uh, Zillow's got some good products. Try it if you want. Other lead sources. Um, I don't even know where to start with that one. Um, well, I'll start with this. There are a lot of lead sources out there. Lead sources are, it's kind of like this golden egg out there. And it's the easiest thing in the world for any company to recruit with. They can just say, I got leads. Oh, wow. Can I have them? Sure, you can have them. Um, leads are coming from every and all sources. They're coming, if someone opens up a, uh, a web browser that has to do with, uh, again, unicorn herding, um, somehow that's going to turn into a real estate lead. It's going to turn into, well, you want to you want to herd unicorns, you're going to need a unicorn ranch, and I'm here in real estate to sell you a ranch. I mean, somehow, some way, all these sites are dedicated to bringing leads in, and the vast, vast majority of, majority of them are just crap. They are, and, and you'll see this when you're in it long enough, People, you call them up and they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm not interested in real estate. Where did you get my name and number? Well, they got it because they went to Alaska Airlines website two months ago, and that became a lead. Um, it's, it's amazing how bad some of those leads are. And a lot of companies just throw them around like, oh, yeah, we got leads. Those are the ones where they're having you sit down in the basement of their office with a phone and saying, here's 200 leads, call them. 
and they're pretty crappy because guess what? Common sense would tell you the really good ones, they're getting kicked up to the people on top of that pyramid scheme or to you know the bigger, more established brokers um, that are paying for them. So it's leads, leads, everybody wants leads, but they're not smart enough to sometimes step back and go, you know what, are these leads any good? Um, we found Realtor.com leads were pretty good. We did see some success with those. Um, if you want to try Realtor.com leads, if you want to try Zillow leads, if you want to just buy real estate leads from different sources, you can. A lot of companies will do that. They'll, they'll contract out and just spend tens of thousands of dollars on leads and then sell those and try to you know, get the money back by having a 50-50 split. So um, if you're going to do leads, you can do them on your own. It's not exclusive to real estate companies. You can buy leads. Just be careful that if they say exclusive lead, it means they're selling them to six other people. And if they say non-exclusive lead, they're selling them to a hundred other people. And uh, it's, it's kind of funny and kind of sad at the same time when you call up one of the leads and they go, why are all of you people calling me right now? Well, because you were a lead and you got sold to many, many different real estate agents. Sorry. Um, uh, we can talk. I don't want to talk too much about leads. Uh, leads are something that you can generate yourself. You don't need to have a magical golden egg laid in front of you. You can go out and get them. It just requires hard work. And I see that more often than not. People that come to the company and they're like, well, if you could just give me 100 leads every day, that would be great. It's like, you know, we don't do that. Um, I could. I could try to, you know, spend money on really cheap leads. Um, but I know they're not going anywhere. Um, if you're going to develop leads, develop it these other ways. Organically with your website. Zillow's fine. It's a good lead source. Um, and if you want to buy leads, Google it. You can just Google real estate leads, buying, uh, buying real estate leads, and you'll get a lot of different companies that do it. Um, be very careful. I wouldn't sign anything long term, and don't be uh, don't be discouraged when you contact a lot of those leads and they go nowhere. So um, we all know that the market's pretty tight. We know listings are few and far between. We know they're very valuable. So to claim all these leads about all these people that are going to list houses, you know, do you really believe it? Um, and it's a numbers game. The, the, bad, the bad leads, I mean, you call 100 people, you're probably going to get something. So it is a numbers game, and, and that's what they're selling. Um, but take the money you save with us, you know, this big commission, and put it back into marketing. It can be put back into these lead sources as well. Okay. I'm trying to stay on track here because um, I do want to end this at noon and then uh, have time for questions or sharing stories and stuff like that. Um, I would like each one of these I could probably go on for two hours and really get in depth on, but this is the time slot we have, and I don't want to I don't want to take up more time than we have allotted. Um, the first meeting with potential clients. Okay, so we talked earlier about setting appointments. You've got to set the appointment, give them an option, Tuesday at 2, Thursday at 3. Um, and then when you set that appointment, you know, go on it. Show up on time, dress well, be professional, present yourself. We've created uh, really nice folders. You can buy them on our online store, 10 of them for 10 bucks. I pass the cost on to you guys, uh, but I don't gouge, I don't mark them up. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. But use the folders when you go into a presentation. Other companies are going to, and um, you want to make sure that you come off as very professional. So you've got your card. You've got your folder. You've got a letter to them talking about yourself and what you can do. And you get into that um, meeting, and, and, and as we get into more of the few training, um, I'll teach you guys, and I'll show you how to close those deals. Um, it's very rare that I lose a listing appointment to someone else because I, I've got a lot of experience, but I also talk to them very professionally and I give them a little bit of oomph that these other companies can't do. It does go back with the financing and then closing costs and qualifying more buyers, a uh, bigger pool of buyers to buy their home. So 
Um, and that's, that's pretty enticing to them. But bring a folder out there. Make sure you clean yourself up. Make sure you're presentable. And then sit and listen. When you sit down, you know, get comfortable and listen. The key to sales is you know when to talk and when to listen. Um, and most of the time, you want to just ask them what the goals are. What do you do? Why do you want to sell your house? What is your plan? I'm here to facilitate and help you. And then let them go. You know, don't sit back this casually, uh, but let them talk about what they want to do. And interject if you have good ideas. On that first appointment, after I've listened to their goals and listened to them, um, I really try to uh, take a good tour of the house, but not a long tour. That'll come later. Uh, but I do want to tour it and peek into every room and, and notice really what, what makes that house stand out. Uh, most people selling their house, they have, um, they know what the neighborhood's like. They know what they want. They certainly know what they owe on it, but they, they've got an idea in their head of what number they're looking for. So at this point, you just want to listen. Listen. You want them to get to know you a little bit. Sharing personal stories is fantastic. People will, um, they'll really attach to you if they have something there and something personal. Again, it could be, hey, we go to the same church. Or uh, it could be, yeah, I shop down at the grocery store, the same grocery store you do. And I mean, whatever the story is going to be, just talk to them. Now, most of my listing appointments, um, or if I'm meeting with a new buyer as well, don't last more than about 40 minutes. Uh, you don't want to take up a ton of time, but you also don't want to be in and out. So keep it pretty concise. Listen to them. Really understand their goals and tell them you want to help them meet those goals. Okay? And then, of course, what do we do? We get the second appointment. Great. So I want to come back with a second appointment. Now, some people say in the first appointment, bring a listing agreement. I think it's smart. I would do that. Um, occasionally, I do. Um, my, my business is really friends and family at this point. So I do on a lot of referral business, but only referral business. So I don't worry as much about the listing agreement at that point. But I think it's good advice to bring that. And if it comes up, you can say, okay, you know, do you want to go through this? If they don't and they're uncomfortable with it, that's fine. Set another appointment to come back. If they do want to sign the listing agreement, set another appointment to come back, to look at the house, to take some photos, to really get an idea. But you want to be closing. If you are meeting with them, you want to be closing. And closing is, I really appreciate your business. I want to list this house. I would love to list this house. I've got some good ideas for selling this house. And some of the other, again, the other stuff that we're going to teach in but give them something where they can really say, okay, I identify with this person. I like this person. I want them to represent me. Um, the first meeting is really critical. It's, it's uh, first impression. It's saying, okay, who are they? They will size you up. You have to listen to them so you understand what they're doing. And, um, and be very careful about ignoring outside influences. We see this a lot. Let's say you're meeting with a little old lady. She's going into a home. But guess what? She has a son, a daughter, multiple sons and daughters that they've got their own idea what they're going to do with this house. Um, they want to keep it as part of the estate. They're going to bicker. They know real estate agents, all that stuff. I just heard a sad story yesterday about that. And the woman actually died. And then her son came in and he had a friend. And, and our agent had helped that woman when she was ailing for years. And the woman said, I absolutely want you to sell my house. The son did not um, did not agree, so he brought in his own agent, and so very kind of a, a sad, tragic story in some ways. But you want to be um, you want to listen to what they're doing, what their goals are, and uh, in about forty minutes or so, bring your paperwork, your listing agreement, bring a property data form, um, and sometimes they'll say, "Well, I don't want to sign anything right now." You can leave it with them. So okay, so you can review the verbiage in this. And then once you leave, if you don't have an appointment, again, try to get that second appointment. Really ask for the business and try to get that second appointment. Um, but if you can't get it, follow up right away. And this is just common sense stuff. Always follow up. Always communicate. It's really critical to even over communicate. <clears throat> I, I, I come from an old school mentality where it's like, hey, no news is good news. Everything's okay. 
being in this business long as as long as I have and seeing what I see every day, I've learned differently. That people want to be communicated with all the time, ad nauseum almost. I call them every day. How is it going? Just want to call you, see how things are going. Do you have any questions? Oh no, okay, good. Well, as I hear something, I'll call you back. Letting you know, just call them every day, and let them know that you're taking care of them. It's really critical. And um, and this delicate part where they haven't signed the listing agreement or they haven't signed a buyer's agreement, I'll get into that here in a second. But you, know, you really want to really want to over communicate with them. Call them back and say thank you. Um, try to get that second appointment. Um, but again, common sense stuff. Always be closing. If you're in an appointment with someone. They're interested in what you have to say, and they're interested in uh, doing business with you. So you want to be closing the deal, asking them for the business. Do not be shy about asking people for the business. Okay? Um, buyer's agency agreements. Oh, my God. The bane of my existence. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say that. It was just I went to the National Association of Realtors with this one. We battled Keller Williams to the hilt. Uh, it ended up in Illinois because of it, and they made their decision. And what they decided basically is a buyer's agency agreement means nothing. Okay, so um, it just doesn't hold any water. The only water it holds is kind of a false sense of you are under contract with me. Um, but the courts have determined, and realtor associations and MLSs, Northwest MLS, not a realtor association, they've determined that it means nothing. If someone wants to get out of it, they can. So just be very careful. I still recommend getting them because you leave that kind of spark of doubt. If something does come up and they're not happy with you, they're like, well, we have a contract. I'll just keep going with this person. Um, but those that know, man, they just, they'll just dump you in a heartbeat and they don't care about that agreement and uh, the courts agree with them. So that's a buyer's agency agreement. Um, any questions? Let me go back. First American, Jeremy, he buys leads uh, from Zillow. Oh, Realtor.com or Zillow. We had better success with Realtor.com. Um, Marissa was managing those leads. We had some really good success with them. Um, they were fairly good quality leads. Zillow's more hit and miss, I think. But that's, you know, that's just one kind of um, one person's opinion. So uh, both of them, maybe, if, if you have the resources, try both and see which one works better. But I, I found from some of our other agents as well, Realtor.com leads are pretty good. People that go to Realtor.com, um, it's got a better search engine, number one. It is, it has just a few more uh, listings on there. That's, Zillow's got a problem right now with getting all the listings uploaded onto their search engine. Realtor.com does a better job of that. So. I think people are more serious when they go to Realtor.com and if they click on a button that says, hey, I need to work with an agent or I want more information about this property, they're just a little bit more serious. So to make a short answer long, that's it. Um, this Realtor, I guess they are very similar quality. Oh, yeah, thanks, Alex. Yeah, it's some okay. So Keith is saying sometimes an agent will make someone sign a buyer rep uh, before they look at houses. That's a good idea. I mean, if you're going to go spend a lot of time with people, um, locking them in, and it's not it's not painful. It's just you know it's just contractual. Uh, as you're about to spend a full weekend neglecting your family, neglecting the rafting trip, all that stuff that you want to do to go show somebody else houses, I think it's fair for them to you know feel a little bit of. Uh, contractual obligation. So yes, Keith, very good point. You know, do get that buyer's agreement. Just because they can get out of it doesn't mean you shouldn't get it. Get it and say, great, let's uh you we're working with each other. I am your eyes and ears in the real estate world. I'm gonna I'm gonna find you the right house. I'm gonna work really hard for you. And this says you're committed to me as well. And so let's go find a house. Um, <clears throat> Some of the games, I'll, I'll touch on this as well since we've got a little bit of time. We're, we're ahead of schedule, I think. Um, some of the games that agents will play out there, um, again, some of the big boxes will teach their agents to try to solicit other agents' clients at open houses. They openly do this. It's like, well, and I've had this one happen before. 
Well, uh, you're here at this open house. Um, are you working with another agent? Yeah, we're working with another agent. Well, this house is going to sell. We've got other offers coming in today. So if you really want it, you've got to buy it with me. And this is the one where the buyer's agency agreement went to the national court, National Association of Realtor Court. And we lost because they determined that uh, they were the first person to show that, the first real estate agent to show that house, and the buyer's agency agreement meant nothing. So um, it was pretty confusing for a lot of people because we thought, huh, you know, this should have more value to it. But so those companies will try to solicit business from your clients. They'll try to basically steal your clients. And it drives me nuts. It's, it, I'm turning red right now because I'm getting fumed up and pissed off. Um, we see a lot of it. And it just, it's like, God, why do you people do it this way? Uh, it's unethical. And, but they do. So that's what we're competing with. So when you are dealing with your clients, and especially a buyer's, maybe a buyer's rep, when you're dealing with your clients, be sure to get them to understand that, number one, you make 100% commission. You're not driving around on a Saturday with them getting paid by the hour or you're on salary or anything like that. Because a lot of people don't know. They just say, I don't know how you get paid. Uh, I just want to look at houses. So make sure you discuss with them, this is how I get paid. I get paid when this house closes or any house that I show you get, uh, closes. So I'm committed to you, but also make sure that you commit to me and any questions you have about any house, even if you go to an open house or talk to other real estate agents, come through me because I get paid. This is how I pay my mortgage. This is how I feed my children. This is my livelihood. And make sure they understand that. Most people are really appreciative. I, it shocks me how many people don't understand commission sales. They just think, well, they have a, they have a salary job or they're w 2 and they're like, well, isn't everybody? It's like, no, this, I only get paid when this closes. So these weekends that we're spending together, I'm not getting paid a dime on it. And you don't want to get burned at the end by them just going, hey, you know, I didn't want to bother my agent, so I just went to this open house and looked at a house. I mean, that's like time out. Wait a second. I do not want you to do that. So, you know, get in there and make sure they understand that um, you are the one that will write up any contract and you are the one that represents them. Okay. Is it okay to poach someone who has a buyer's rep with another agent? Um, no. Again, it's not, it's Keith, it's not ethical. Um, I just don't, I don't support it because I've seen the people who have been hurt so bad by it. Um, and, you know, the company that does it the most, uh, there's one in particular, most of you know who they are. It's just, it, it drives me insane when they do that. Um, you know, standard operating line is if you're working with a client or if you're working with another real estate agent, great. Contact them and you can make an offer through them. That's the ethical way to do this. Um, I just, that company that does it that way, oh my, drives me crazy. So, um, uh, do, 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 Lynn, I'm not going to answer that question. Do, do, do. But bum, 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 we can uh, I can answer it privately, Lynn. Okay, so where are we? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was my lip, by the way. <laughs> so uh, that's when I, I'm thinking about something and I don't want to share. <laughs> <laughs> I think she asked you privately. I don't see it on the board. Oh, okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm just getting through any more of these. Okay, so we are ready for this last little bit. Uh, referrals. Um, and then I want to get into some of the marketing material we have, so there is a little bit more. Referrals are, you know, that's the, that's the meat of this sucker. This, the, those are the dollar bills. The chump change is going after... Uh, some stranger at the donut shop that mentions he might want to sell his house in line in front of you. That's great. Talk to him. Strike up a conversation. Get that business. Um, but don't rely on that. If, if you really want to be successful in this industry, you got to develop a good referral source. And the key to referrals, like any and all of this that we're talking about, anything in sales is asking for the business. You got to ask for the business. You have to say, you know, I really, really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your business. Is there anybody you know that could benefit from the services that I've offered you? 
Is there anybody that you could refer to me that I could call that might be thinking about buying or selling a home? You have to really ask for it. And amazingly, there's so many people. I mean, we all know people that know somebody that's going to buy or sell. The degrees of separation are two at this point. Maybe two. But, you know, it could be, oh, yeah, you know, I was talking to um, uh, another teacher in the teacher's lounge, and she said she's thinking about buying a house after you know, getting a teaching job. Oh, fantastic. Again, a lot of things go back to finance. So a professional degree, so you guys know Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, a professional degree allows them to buy a home immediately and get their contract. So if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, if you're an engineer, if you're a school teacher, and you just got out of school a week ago, you got your degree there, and you got a job in the school district. And they've got a three-year contract saying, yep, you're a full-time teacher. Guess what? You can use that income to go buy a house right away. So you don't have to wait two years or have a two-year track record. We in this industry, you got to have a two-year track record. And like most industries, um, you have to show income and all that. So that contract that they get right away out of school will work. That will suffice. Um, well, yes, when you're, you know, it's like, do you know anyone that would benefit from my services? Well, yeah, in the teacher's lounge, this new teacher is thinking about buying. Can you get me her name and number? Or do you have her name and number? Or would it be okay if I reached out to her? Um, and most people say, sure, go ahead. Remember this about sales. It's so much easier to say yes than no. Yes is an easier thing, and, and people have studied the brain waves and everything that goes with yeses and nos. Um, knows that negativity kind of uh, has a negative effect on the brain. Yes is positive, and people want to naturally say it. So um, don't give them a reason not to say it. Typically, they're looking for that reason, like, no. Uh, but they want to typically say yes. Um, referrals are just so important. So always ask for the referrals. Uh, put on your website that you love referrals and that you appreciate referrals. Ask everybody if they know. And those conversations when you're just talking to Uncle Fred, he's not buying or selling a house. Hey, do you know anybody that lives? Do you know anybody in your work that might be thinking about buying or selling real estate? If you kind of dive into that part of the conversation, you're going to drum up business. That's where it is. That's where the gold vein is, is in those referrals. So I just can't emphasize enough referrals and then back to your list of contacts. You know, you contact them and say, you know, if you're not interested in a buying or selling real estate right now at this present time, do you know anybody who is? And uh, people, yeah, you know, I, I, Uncle Fred, he's thinking about selling his house. I don't know why. It's a beautiful house. And then, bam, can I, con can I contact Uncle Fred? Um, so it's really important to... Uh, get those referrals. I, I just, in any sales job, it doesn't matter if it's real estate or, you know, if you're selling widgets or, you know, ice to Eskimos, you want to be able to ask for referrals. Ask for the business, number one, and then ask for referrals, number two. Okay? So, I sing a lot around the office. This morning it was actually, uh, paint your wagon. <laughs> I don't know why this stuff creeps into my mind. Childhood memories, I suppose. Okay, so I think I've gotten to all the questions and then the referrals. We covered that. We're on track. It's 1146. Um, I was talking earlier about uh, presentation folder. So I'm going to bring this up. So here is a presentation folder. It is professional, it's clean, it's high quality. Um, use these in your presentations. Again, you can buy them online at cost, 10 of them for 10 bucks. And everything in our online store is really starting to develop. So we've got the folders, we have thank you cards. Thank you cards. And then little ditty on the back with our contact information. We have mugs. We have water tumblers, we have canteens, we have, let's see what we have here, pads. And then, so we're also, we just got our first shipment of coats, jackets, heavy coats. They're all going to be embroidered, they're going to be stitched, um, pullovers, polos, golf wear, hats, 
wine tote bags. Um, there's a wine case thing that's got like an opener and a, um, I don't really call it, Ingrid would call it a diffuser or um, something like that. Just like a, a little, I think it's called a diffuser. Anybody that knows wine, Keith, you'd probably know this. But anyway, so it's a little package that's got a bunch of wine stuff in it. Um, that you, it's going to be embossed. And so you can order these things for you or your clients. We want to have gifts on there. We want to have some swag on there. Um, I personally, for all my clients, I'm going to do the wine tote with a good bottle of wine and a thank you card, of course. Um, so use that stuff. Uh, and right now you can order open house signs. You can open uh, for sale signs. You can order a whole bunch of stuff on there. And we're going to just add to it and add to it and add to it. We want to make it easy. We've got a thousand boxes of different sizes. So our fulfillment center basically puts it all in there. You give them a credit card, they tape it up, and they mail it UPS. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, yes, we do have decals, Lynn. Um, actually, I can give some of those to you. So come on into the office. Um, we have stickers. We're getting kind of low on them, um, so we're probably going to have to reorder some. Accessible through kellywright.com. Yes, we all love that. Uh, no, we're on a very tight budget. Lynn. I appreciate it. I'm hurt to ask. Uh, okay, so that is that part of swag. We've got that. Oh, one other thing. I'll finish up with this. This guy. So let's see if we can, if you guys can see that. There it is. So this is listing booster. These little signs. So little grommets here. Hang them from your sign. Um, and what they do when you're when you're texting this and you're viewing the pro whoop, there we go when you're viewing the property um, they put in this code they get a view the property there's a whole website dedicated to the property we pay for this you guys don't have to so you just have to hang it on your uh, for sale signs and then if someone comes along and they have questions about that house you get the lead. And it goes to us as well from a lending perspective. So Louie gets the, uh, the lending side. But if they're like, give me more information on 123 Oak Street, um, then they provide their phone number, great. You get to call them right away. And again, always call right away. Don't wait two days. But call them right away and say, hey, this house is under contract, but can I show you another house? Are you working with an agent? So you, you get that lead. And that's a great free service that we offer. Um, Alex has those signs. We've got hundreds of them. So if you're like, you know what, I've got three listings coming up and I want to do listing booster, contact Alex and he'll mail you um, these signs, however many you need. And then the other part of the signs, I guess I, I didn't get into this, but I, I want to remind people, and I shouldn't have to remind people, this is the nuttiest thing that, uh, that I deal with, is people that don't put their name on their for sale sign. I mean, I can't tell you how many people call me up and they're like, well, there's no name on the for sale sign, so I'm just calling the company. I'm like, who would not put their, their name on it? That's just business right there. Be sure to get a name writer. If you're going to develop your own signs, that's fine. Just make sure your contact information is on there and grab that referral business. People that um, you know aren't working with an agent and are just curious about that house. Um, listing booster, another thing about that, it does boost your listing to many, many different sites. Um, Alex has a, a better list of them, but I know it boosts them up to all sorts of different sites, and including, I, I think, uh, Trulia and a whole bunch of others. Um, so there's more exposure. You can tell your clients that you're going to use listing booster to give their listing more exposure on the interweb. And then any people that contact uh, you, you get that lead. Alex did one on his listing a month ago. Alex, it was about 13 leads, I think, right? So yeah, he leads and a buyer. Yeah, he sold the house in 24 hours. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, so they, it does work, and we see a bunch of them. People that use it, I, I, because I see the emails, and every day there's just dozens and dozens of emails from Listing Booster. Um, just reading through these instrument packages or software. Forrest, what we're gonna work on? There's there's a couple big things. So this is the first step in kind of our video production and all that. We're going to work on a few things. One is going to be an actual video of me uh, trying to do a concise, I'm going to do a concise, but do a concise 
two to three to maybe four minute presentation on this. So that people, either you can offer it to them, you can say, here's a link to what we do that's different. And then also have a script. So Alex and I have talked about it. We just talked about it in our marketing meeting yesterday afternoon about that script. And so we're going to keep working on that. So that's stuff that's coming down the pike very soon. I want to make sure you've got that script. And I also want to make sure that you've got a good insert that you can put into these folders that describes what we do that's different. And effectively, it's going to keep revolving around. We can show you how to eliminate closing costs so that the buyer and the seller do not have to pay it. And we can, we can, we can qualify more buyers. We can give them more purchase power. And it's simply through interest rate. A better interest rate translates into more purchase power and also to eliminate closing costs in a transaction. Sellers like hearing that because it's win-win. It's like, well, the buyers... They don't have to pay it, and I don't have to pay it because I don't want to. It just comes off my bottom line. I like it. Tell me more. That's what I have to work on because once I get to that tell me more part, and you guys are like, oh, I don't know. Um, well, okay, that's my responsibility. So I've got to get that script, and I've got to get that information in the insert, um, and also have a YouTube video where they can um, go to that and really understand what we do differently. Um, but it's all predicated on better interest rate, means lower payments for buyers, it means eliminating closing costs, it means qualifying for more house, and also qualifying for more buyers. We want to qualify more buyers that maybe uh, the high interest rate, they're limited at 270. Well, guess what? You go down a half a point in interest rate, you can now get up to 300000 and have the same payment that you would have at Wells Fargo. That's what we're basically um, going to be teaching. But that's for another day. Um, okay, now let's get into the question and answer section. So I want to make sure that everyone is unmuted. And I don't know where the unmute all. Oh, wait, unmute other people. Unmute all. I don't know if it's doing it. Can you guys... Can you guys tell me a story? Let's see. Send an unmute request to Forrest and Frank. I think Guy, you got in here to, to, to a little later. Jagir, there you are. Send an unmute request. Jeremy came in. Okay. Now, for some reason, I just can't hear you guys. So I'm really trying to figure all this out. Um, we'll work on it some more for next week because I'd love for you guys to be, oops, um, I'd love for you guys to be able to just pipe in and share your stories without going through the chat room. But we're still going to have to work that out. Alex, maybe what we can do is contact your team meeting and let's see if we can figure out yeah, I, get everybody to I think share information. They have themselves muted um, annually. Oh. Okay. All right, so guys, I'm going to wrap it up, and then we're going to have this training on um, YouTube, and we will send you the link. So if you want to later on, you can go back to it. I get it that it's rudimentary, it's basic sales, it's basic marketing. Uh, the more advanced stuff is kind of, that's, that's more one-on-one -on -one time, and, and I may do more webinars on advanced training. But what I want to do is make sure we kind of go back to the basics and people understand um, where they, what, they, what to expect from advertising, what to expect from sales, how to sell a little bit. Hopefully you guys learned a few things. You know, always be closing, be consistent in your marketing and advertising, and always be asking for the business. Get back to people right away. Immediately call them, set an appointment, give them two options so that they know you're going to have an appointment. It's just a matter of this time or this time. And really push the business and ask for referrals. Um, it's not complicated, but there's a consistency. And there's a um, there's kind of just a full-on always be in sales mode tactic. So you got to have those conversations with people and always be setting appointments, and it'll come in. And then the one thing people do, I'll, I'll finish on this note. The one thing, thing a lot of successful people do is they pocket all this money. Let's say they close two or three deals a month. We have. We have someone that just closed eighty thousand dollars this month, and we have another person that's going to do that next month. You know, closing five, six, seven deals in a month. 
the, the consistency that people have is, yeah, they go out and buy something nice, you know, a new pair of shoes or, you know, go, go to the resort for the weekend or something. But don't go hog wild. Don't go to Tahiti for a month. And then come back and go, oh, wow, that money went pretty fast. And now I don't have any leads or new business. <clears throat> so the consistent ones, they, you know, they buy something, they go out to a nice dinner, they pocket it, and they keep their business rolling. And those are the ones that we find are always uh, So remember that. Sales is not rocket science, but it is, uh, it is work and it's consistency. And you have to apply um, basic sales tactics. So thank you, everybody. Uh, this concludes our sales and marketing webinar. And next week will be electronic transactions, e-signing, transaction desk, and kind of how to use that. Um, and I look forward to it next week. So I will sign off, and uh, everyone have a good Wednesday.